So what would be awesome is if you could like contour, you know, shave a couple pounds out of here. I like to call it day of the dead makeup. Just paint a skull over my face. Make me look like a young Caitlyn Jenner. Okay. Easiest thing. Thank you. Tonight on Access TV, it's Gotham Comedy Live. Get ready to laugh with Travis House, H. Foley, Gary Anderson, John Bush. As we toast, Michelle Collins. Gotham Comedy Live. All happening right now. Ladies and this because it makes me look nine times the size. Like you never want like a skinny pole in front of you unless that's what you do for a living. Give it up. Hi. Oh my God. I'm very excited to be here. First of all, I love you guys here in the front. I like you're very close. I'm like, it's like looking up at the Chrysler building when you're this slow. It's like terrifying. Honestly, this background, I look like Godzilla, like torturing. This doesn't help my height at all. Like standing in front of a huge cityscape. I feel great. I feel thin. It was Yom Kippur. I fasted. I chugged. I call it the day where we honor Gwyneth. I just like didn't eat the whole day. I read Goop. Not a recipe to be found. It was fabulous. Um, I chugged a Diet Snapple. It was really great. He's the best. <laughs> Raspberry flavored, oh my God. Took it straight to Temple, I had a great time. Um, no, I, when people are sitting so close to me here, I always wear like a loony tunic because I call it like my camel toe burka because it's just like a little, I'm always like a little worried that like, you know, it's like one lip or two, like, well, we'll find out soon enough. There's gonna be a moment tonight. Um, I wrote a little song about my camel toe, can I sing it? It goes like this. Hi, thank you. I feel like Celine in Vegas. That is so nice. Okay, here it goes. It goes. <clears throat> These jeans right up when I close my thighs. Every second of the night, bam, I have a front vagina. These jeans that creep when it's warm outside. Every moment I'm awake, the further up they snake, further up they snake. Anyways, we don't have the rights to that song, please. I have to say, thank you guys. I'm actually very jealous because there's a girl up here with bangs and you have such gorgeous bangs. And I honestly, you see that I have this weird like 1950s like toupee thing going on because I'm growing my bangs out. And it hurts, it sucks. I'm telling you right now, it's gonna suck for you. I'm really sorry. It sucks, it takes nine years. Uh, and I loved my bangs. I always said that I, I really wanted to look Asian. That was my thing when I had them. I was like, I had the liner, I had the bangs and I just, I wanted to look Asian so I could get a Jewish husband. I was like, this is the one way. She knows what I mean, girl. You know you did it, some Jews, girl. They follow you, girl. On Yom Kippur, you should have gone to Temple. You would have been the talk of Yom Kippur. They would have been like, who is that Asian girl? We love her. Anyways, meanwhile, I'm like sitting in a corner with my Snapple, crying camel toe, like, why won't anyone talk to me? Okay. <laughs> Hi, but I lead a fun life. It's a fun, fun life. Um, I kind of feel like we're in a TJ Fridays, but in a good way. Like, I feel, I feel comfortable here. Thank you. He's adorable. But yeah, it's going to really, it's going to really suck. One time they cut my bangs too short and I called it look the fat Von D. Because <laughs> it was like a very like a big old, I mean, please, this is my life. This is my life. This girl I love. Um, let's see, guys, it's been a very interesting couple of couple of years for me going all the way back to high school, I like to say. First of all, <laughs> it's only a couple years back. I don't like to talk about it. Um, back in the 70s, I, uh, I, <laughs> I look very, they always say face or figure. I'm like, well, you know, my shit is all face because I look young, but y'all know down here, it's like Jessica Tandy from the neck down. It's horrifying. Um, gentlemen. <laughs> and by the way, if you see lines, I am wearing Spanx. Like, you know, you get lines, ladies know, from the Spanx. So like, sometimes I'm like, God, I look so thin. And then I'll see a picture of myself from behind and it looks like someone pushed an inner tube under my arms. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Like, I want them to make it like speed skating Spanx where all the fat just comes out right at the face. But then my body is like a size two, but I have like a big glowing face. Anyways. Um, so back when I was in high school, I, um, came up with a genius idea to, well, first, I wanted to like, you know, be athletic, haha. Uh -huh. And so that's hilarious. And so I was like, well, what sport? Okay, basketball, never gonna happen. I'm very delicate, sir. I know you're not thinking that. It's true, I am. And I figured, okay, I'll join like um, shot put in discus because that's like for like kind of broad, strong girls. And uh, it was great because I was like the skinniest girl on the team. So I was like running the fastest mile, but then they make you throw a metal Frisbee. And I'm like, this is no fun. Oh, side note, did you guys hit any traffic from the Pope? Yeah. Did you guys really? You, were you with him? 
She was like, girl, yes. You saw, what happened? He was from my, from my apartment building. I saw him. You saw him from your apartment building? Was he at like D'Agostino's? Just like buying stuff there? That's hysterical. I'm, I'm screaming right now. I'm so excited. The only thing I'm more excited about than the Pope is Pizza Rat. I love Pizza Rat. If Pizza Rat, I love Pizza Rat so much. Honestly, if, I'll tell you right now, I would not, I love the Pope. I, I'm a Jewish girl, but I love the Pope. I really do, genuinely. But I would not line up for the Pope. If someone told me that Pizza Rat was driving in a little Jeep down Fifth Avenue, I wouldn't be here right now. I'd be like, y'all, I'm sleeping out for Pizza Rat. Okay, I love that rat. Y'all, he loves him some pizza. I don't know if you saw him. He's dragging that big old slice down the steps. I was like, this rat is so crazy. He loves pizza. It is so stupid. <laughs> And then he didn't even get the pizza. I'm like, Pizza Rat, you sound stupid. You drag that whole slice down and you don't even eat it? I love Pizza Rat. He's so funny. Also, not a coincidence, by the way, that um, tomorrow is the 20th anniversary of O.J. Simpson's, uh, I think, the verdict. And, right, is he here? Oh, fuck me. <laughs> I just feel like a black glove raising the air. I'm like, gotta run. Hashtag pizza rat. Love you guys. Bye. Um, no, but it's the 20th anniversary of OJ, and it's no coincidence that the Pope is driving around in a white SUV. Hashtag Illuminati, you guys. Check it out on Twitter. What's that about? I'm like, you know, I love an Illuminati conspiracy. I'm like on, I mean, <laughs> this guy, wait, he's really into it. Hold on. Now. <laughs> is there like a like triangle with an eye in your arm? No. Oh, really? Like tramp stamp? Illuminati tramp stamp? I want to know. Do you have one? Okay, so <laughs> what if Beyonce was here and she was like, I'm not laughing, like she's not laughing because she's a part of the Illuminati, everybody. Get into it. Beyonce's a part of it. I might be a part of it. <sighs> Hashtag pizza rat. I don't know. I'm just so much to think about. No, but going back to high school, so uh, I decided, by the way, you're adorable. I don't know where you came from. Hashtag pizza rat. I would also line it up for you, sir. You're adorable. Okay, I'll make this quick. So I, uh, in high school, I decided, um, thanks to uh, my best gay friend, Katari, who was so great, he was like, you know what? It was homecoming time. He was like, you should, uh, you should run for homecoming queen. And of course I was like, haha, that's a great idea. And then I think I got too much sun one day, like I got sun poisoned and I was like, I'm doing it. It was like the same feeling I had when I auditioned for American Idol and it began as a joke. And then by the end I was like singing Joe to see and I was like, I got this. And then I was like an outtake, it's fine. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> so I was like, this is is great. I'm going to run for homecoming queen. And um, it was actually exciting. I got to the top two. So it went homecoming queen and then homecoming senior princess. And it was very exciting. Like we had to go to this football game. And um, this is kind of an interesting fact. I'm from Miami, by the way. Any Miami people here? Really? Yes. So wait, maybe you know, maybe you know this man I'm about to mention. Do, I went to high school with a huge celebrity, folks, and you'll, you'll never guess. Remember the guy who, um, he took bath salts and then he ate that guy's face off? Yeah. That guy was in my graduating class, okay? I was like, that's how you know. That's why people want to get rid of Florida as a state, okay? Because that guy was at my homecoming, and I remember looking on, like, some, some website and seeing, like, a picture of, like, a Costco cherry pie and being like, what's that about? And I was like, oh, that's a man's face. And I know the guy that ate that face. So that is a hashtag Miami, hashtag Illuminati, hashtag Pizza Rat. Okay. Um, anyways, so <laughs> just adding them on. Uh, but, you know, that guy was there. So anyways, I go to this homecoming thing, and Katari tells me, that uh, in order to win, <laughs> it was against me. It was me against a girl named Sharon Walker, spelled Sharon. Hashtag Miami. Um, <laughs> Sharon was amazing. We loved her. We loved her. Anyway, so uh, it, it was a, came down to a song. This is really true. And um, he taught me this song. It's my high school song. And uh, now I know you guys already know that I have the voice of an angel. I clearly proved that earlier tonight. <laughs> uh, but anyways, no. So we had to sing this song, and it was extremely moving. And um, I lost, <laughs> which was fine, and I actually went to um, hug Sharon, and I thought she was like welcoming me with like beautiful open arms, and then as I went over to hug her, she actually punched me in the face, that is not a lie, punched me in the face, and I was like, Sharon, how could you? And then it was like, the guy ate the guy's face off, pizza rat, here we are. But I do want to sing, if you don't mind, may I sing my high school song for you guys? Because it's actually, I want you to know, we're ending on this, but I really want you to know something, this is a gift, this is a gift. This song has never been put on Laserdisc, it's never been put on A-Track, it's, it's an on, this is not on iTunes, this is a one-time only situation and it is the most beautiful song. Here we go. <clears throat> Far beyond our dreams and our wishes. Far beyond our hopes and our fears. Rise the challenges of tomorrow that we face throughout the coming years. Bump, 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 bump. We strive towards the light. Boom, to fix our eyes. 
on the stars of truth. This is our hope, our challenge, light and truth in search of tomorrow, today. And that is a public school song, ladies and gentlemen. So don't you dare tell me that Miami Public Schools. Thank you, sir. Guys, thank you for listening to that. We have such an amazing show. Please stick around. All our comics are coming up next. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Travis Howell is taking the stage when he returns. And stick around later tonight for Michelle Collins when she takes the stage. Nobody wants to believe their parents are having sex. You never believed your parents are having sex, right? No, I used to think my parents were playing cards. I did. I'd walk by their room at night. I'd hear my mother shout, hit me. I thought they were playing gin rummy. And now I'm responsible to like, teach them about sex. You know, my mother never taught me shit about sex. She would say things to me like, why buy the cow when you could get the milk for free? Th this annoyed me on so many levels, you know? Like, first of all, not only am I not a cow, but I'm lactose intolerant, okay? Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. the show officially started. Your uh, first comic of the night, hilarious guy, great t-shirt collection. We talked all about it. Um, his, he's, you've seen him on NBC's Late Shift. You're going to love him. <laughs> there you go. Please log to the stage, Travis House. you guys already, man. All right. Hey, I had to walk away from the dumbest conversation I have ever been a part of today. This girl saw my tattoos and she said, oh my God, I like your tattoos. What do they symbolize? So I said, you know, I'm a vet. And she goes, oh my God, I love puppies. <laughs> I told her, I said, I'm not that kind of vet. I'm actually a veteran. She goes, oh, so like, you don't eat meat. <laughs> so I spent, um, I spent four years in the um, Marine Corps infantry, United States Marine Corps. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The biggest thing the Marine Corps taught me was how to be secure in my manhood and my sexuality, right? I had to learn the hard way really quick to get secure really fast in cold weather training, right? <laughs> the first thing they teach you during cold weather training is when your buddy goes down with hypothermia, the fastest way to get his body temperature up is to get in a sleeping bag with him, naked, skin on skin contact, right? And the big question at 18 years old was not, do I get in a sleeping bag naked with another dude? Because you're going to do whatever it takes to save your friend who is freezing to death. The biggest question we had was, what position do we get into? <laughs> Big man, do we go face to face and mash our castle towers, right? <laughs> Sir, do we go buns to buns? Am I the big spoon or are you the little spoon? Like, how are we doing this? <laughs> you certainly didn't go in head first, right? Well, the Navy does, but that's a whole nother story. That's how that was. After I got out of the Marine Corps, I became a police officer and then a firefighter. And one of the highlights, no, no, you won't be clapping at the end of this. <laughs> one of the highlights of my firefighting career was I was selected to be on a firefighter fitness calendar. <laughs> And that was cool because at the time, in my mind, chicks dig dudes on firefighter fitness calendars. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's right. What I did not realize is there's actually a lot of dudes <laughs> that dig dudes on firefighter fitness calendars. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. 
I had never been hit on by so many gay men in my life. And I loved it. <laughs> I embraced it like cold weather training. I owned it. The first time I got recognized from the calendar got really awkward for both parties involved. Because I walked into the gas station, and when I did, this little gay clerk that was working freaked out. He lost it. He goes, ah ha, OMG! He goes, you're Mr. August, right? And me being the modest man that I am, I was like, yeah, you know, how'd you guess, right? He goes, cause you're pinned on my headboard, mister. Oh, what do you say to that? I'll tell you what I said. I said, hey, you think I can get a free Slurpee? <laughs> You guys know I got a free Slurpee. <laughs> so I've had, uh, I've had all of the underpaid, underappreciated careers that one man could possibly have in his lifetime. And just to make sure I did not leave anything out, I married a school teacher. <laughs> we are poor as shit, man. It is like we took an oath. It's like we took an oath of poverty, right? right? We have a really good marriage, but unfortunately, I'm the one that brings all of the baggage into our relationship because of my past professions, right? Different personalities will come out at the wrong times. <laughs> my wife turned 31 years old this year and I wanted to do something really special for her. So I called her up and I said, baby, when you get home, I want you to get dressed out. I'm taking you to a surprise birthday dinner. She said, okay. <laughs> so that's what she did. She came home and she spent the next 17 hours getting ready. <laughs> By the time she was ready, it was no longer her birthday <laughs> and she was eligible for social security. <laughs> when she walked outside, right? When she walked outside, I was standing there with the car door open because where I'm from, chivalry is not dead. But that's when it got weird because like as soon as she was getting in the car, I accidentally flipped back into cop mode and I put my hand on top of her head. <laughs> I was putting her in the car. And she just got her hair done and she's like, get your hands off my damn head. I said, who are you talking to? Put your damn feet in the car. She's like, shut the door. So I slammed the door. Now we're arguing through the glass like a bad episode of Cops. She's like, where are you taking me? I said, girl, I'm taking you downtown. <laughs> but women like to hold a grudge, don't they, fellas? Yeah. yeah. Right. Cause I figured she would have gotten over it by the time I got into the driver's seat. She was not. She was still very upset. She had her arms crossed. She was like, why do I have to sit in the back? <laughs> so I went back into cop mode. I'm like, hey, maybe you should exercise your right to remain silent. And she goes, oh, you mean like I do in the bedroom? Ooh. Yeah, my wife has those comebacks that you don't come back from. When I was in the Marines, we communicated with hand and arm signals, very stealthy. This means halt, this means I've spotted the enemy, this means negative, that means move out. You guys know, y'all seen Black Hawk Down. <laughs> Every once in a while, I try to communicate with my wife the same way, but it gets awkward, you know, because she'll try to communicate back to me using girl hand and arm signals, and it gets really confusing. But she has a great way of getting her point across. We were shopping in the mall two anniversaries ago. I spotted a necklace that I thought she might like. And there were a lot of people around, so I didn't want them in our financial business. So I went stealth mode. I said, you know, halt. And she stopped. And I told her, come here. And she came here. And then, you know, fellas, jewelry is the enemy. So I spotted the enemy. I was like. And that's when it got weird. She goes, oh. So I turned the price tag over and I saw what it cost. I said, negative Ghost Rider, move out. <laughs> you guys have been great. Thank you so much. I'm Travis House. Thank you so much. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City.
H. Moley is taking the stage when we return. These people are maniacs, and I love them so much. Uh, we have a lot more comedy to bring to you guys, so I'm going to go continue drinking wine. I'm having the best time. Uh, and while I'm doing that, please welcome, you know this next guy. He's in uh, Center City Comedy. It's a hilarious sketch group, and his name is H. Foley. Everybody, bring him up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Thank you. My God, that is so sweet, guys. Thank you so much. It is good to be here tonight. I, uh, I got my skinny jeans on. 42 loose fit. No big deal. I'm trying. I try to look cool as a New York City comedian. You know, I get the sneaks, the jeans. No matter what I wear, I end up looking like a lesbian poker player. It's not a good look. Not a good look. I hear people after the show, they're like, she was funny. She was good. I like what she did there. That was good. That was good. That was good. I uh, started out doing comedy in Philadelphia. I've uh, been up here for a few years. Thank you, Philly. Um, I used to live in New York, though, for like 10 years before I did comedy. But back then, I was really into, um, not web design, what's it called? Cocaine. Sorry, I don't think of it. Well, drug problem. I learned a lot, though, about prostitutes. Um, I, uh, you pay for your sins, though, you know? Because now I'm 39 years old and I work part-time as a waitress, all right? I say waitress because I work at this cute little Greek boutique restaurant in the West Village, and the waitstaff is me, an overweight comedian in his 30s, and four of the hottest 22-year-old girls that I have ever seen in my life. Like, I have no idea how I got this job. The only way I can figure I got the job is through some new version of affirmative action. <laughs> like they had to hire a fat guy. Like my boss was in the office with a stack of paperwork like Obama's all over me. <laughs> we don't get a fat guy in here, they gotta close this down, all right? Get out there and find somebody. I just happened to be standing outside that day looking in the window with an ice cream cone like, Ugh. What's up, you guys hiring? <laughs> and typical guy, when I got the job, I thought it was going to be awesome. You know, working with a bunch of beautiful women every day, let the personality work on them a little bit. What's that going to lead to? <laughs> Extreme disappointment for me, all right? That's what it led to. Because I was working there for like two weeks, and one of these girls would come up to me every day and be all excited and be like, Henry, oh my God, it is so fun working with you. You know, we're becoming like really good friends. No, like really good friends. Like, you know what it's like? We were all talking, and it's just like you're one of the girls. <laughs> this was the face right here. I was like, all right, cool, one of the girls. Here we go. Okay. When this girl said this to me, I could literally feel my penis <laughs> shrink up a little bit unzip my zipper, step out of my jeans, put his backpack on, and walk outside and get in a cab. All right? Swear to God. Swear to God. And it just looked back at me like, well, you're never gonna need me again. Good luck with the job, fatso. The weird thing is, though, is after working there for a little while, me and these girls, have become like really good friends. No, they're like my besties, okay? Like I swear to God, it's unbelievable. The problem is I am getting way too involved in their 22-year-old lives, all right? I have no idea where my 39-year-old life ends and their beautiful, hopeful 22-year-old life begins. All right, we're getting Manny petties together, all right? The worst is we go to brunch together every Sunday. Yeah, oh, who does brunch? Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Ladies, thank you for inventing brunch, by the way. It's delicious. Champagne, orange juice, mimosas, love them. Takes like 18 to get fucked up, but still they're really good. You really have to work hard at embarrassing yourself at brunch. It's either 18 mimosas or 45 pancakes. But the problem is I'm becoming one of the girls. Like when we go out, I'll be the one that Instagrams what we're having for brunch and posts it online. I'm taking a picture of what we're having. I post it on Facebook, have a cute little caption over here at Gramercy Park with the ladies. 
having the most delicious challah French toast. I don't know what they put in this maple butter, but it must be methamphetamine. YOLO. <laughs> Yelling at me for saying that. It's crazy. The worst part is hanging out with them. Going out to a club with a bunch of beautiful women is very difficult. All right. What's that, brother? Who gets more pussy than me? All right. Are you their pimp? Is that guy... I got, a, I got a 20 on me. Can you spot me the other five? Uh, all right. Thank you, Meek Mill in the back. I appreciate that. It's live TV, baby. It's how you do it, live TV. So anyway, that's right. Where was I? Oh yeah, brunch. I forgot. We were having brunch. Now, you go to club with a bunch of hot chicks and you look like me, the point is guys will hit on these girls right in front of you. Like I'm not even there. And I'm standing in the corner like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I could be somebody's boyfriend. <laughs> All right, cousin, how about that? Is that better? <laughs> Fucking assholes. Awesome. Creepy uncle just got out of prison. Either way, it's emasculating. And I've never been a jealous kind of guy, but I literally find myself just trying to cock block the shit out of these dudes. <laughs> oh yeah, baby, I'm that girl. All right. <laughs> I'm that girl. Not on my watch, sister. Uh-uh. Not happening. All right, I don't think so. I'm that girl that ruins the night out for all the other girls in the group. All right? Because I don't know how to handle myself. I'm drunk the second we get into the bar. I got red wine stains in my teeth. I'm dancing real bad. I'm complaining. I'm laughing one second, bawling my eyes out there next. I, uh, I got fired from my first wedding table job when I moved to New York, uh, and I got fired because I got caught by my manager eating off people's plates. I agree, worst way for a grown man to lose his job. All right, but it's not like I walked up to some lady and grabbed her burger and took a bite. It was the back kitchen, there was an appetizer tray, there was a mozzarella stick, no one was around. Do the math, my friend, okay? But I got fired because they had me on surveillance camera doing it. Yeah, and it's that old grainy black and white surveillance footage. So I look like Babe Ruth stealing a mozzarella stick. <clears throat> so I call my parents, right, and I have them both on the phone at the same time. And I'm like, guys, look, I got fired. I don't want to talk about it, but I'm going to need help with the rent this month. My mother would not let it go. She's like, what? Who would fire you? You're such a good boy. <laughs> well, I would never fire you. What happened? You tell me right now what happened. I am going to send these people an email. This is ridiculous. <laughs> And I'm like, Mom, I was eating off people's plates. And then she goes, you're disgusting. <laughs> my dad, all my dad wanted to know was, what were you eating? <laughs> what was in front of you that you could not contain yourself like a human being? Now, the only thing that saved me is my father's notoriously cheap, and he loves seafood. So I told my dad I got caught eating scallops. First thing I thought of, I was like, scallops, dad, they call me eating scallops. And he wanted to get so mad I could tell, but he was just like, scallop shit, they're market price, you did the right thing. You're a good kid, I'll catch you in a check. Guys, I'm Mitch Foley, thank you so much. You're awesome. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Gary Anderson is taking the stage when we return. I'm in the left lane, West Side Highway. There's a town car in front of me doing about, I'd say 55. I was doing about 165. <laughs> I was so fucked up, I had both my feet on the gas pedal. I didn't even know there was a, forgot there was a brake in the car. <laughs> I got an inch from this car and I flash the, you know, the lights, telling them, I see the two blue cop lights in the back window. And this is why I love New York. This is what the cop says over the speaker. That's right, asshole, pull over. <laughs> and I'm legally drunk. I'm like, I'm going to jail. There's no fucking doubt about this, you know? And you know what? I didn't even get a ticket. I got out of the ticket. And they even made me blow into that thing. What do you call that? Uh... <laughs> no, no, the head of his dick. And uh, yeah. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. To keep the show moving with all these hilarious people, coming up next, this gentleman is very handsome, ladies. I want you to all get ready for him. Woo! 
of single ladies. Okay, uh, he is all the way from San Francisco, which means he flew Virgin America. This guy knows. Please give it up for Gary Anderson. All right, all right. Thank you guys, feels like a home game. Appreciate it, nice. Nice. Um, I had a situation recently. Um, had to buy a pregnancy test. And pregnancy tests are weird as hell to me, mostly because they're 99% accurate, but they come in packs of two. <laughs> two. Two. Like a fucking Twix bar. It's 99% accurate. Why do we need two of the exact same thing? You know, so this girl, she takes the first test, and that test comes back negative, and I'm really excited about that. But for some reason, she picks up the second test, and I knocked that shit out of her hands. I was like, no, -uh, I think we're good. We got, we got the results we're receiving. Let's hit the club or something. Turn up. But she was like, no, I'm not going to save a pregnancy test. That's weird. Who does that? I'm going to take it. So she takes a second test, and really strange. True story. That test comes back positive, and she is freaking the fuck out. She's like, oh, my God, like, what do we do now? And I'm like, what do you mean, what do we do now? We fucking buy more tests. <laughs> Shit's going to turn into a best out of seven NBA final series. <laughs> like... No, yes, no, yes, no, no, fucking I win. Give me my trophy. I like to thank God. He's always been there for me. I like to thank my teammates. We got great camaraderie, great chemistry. We studied a lot of film, and I know when we split those first two tests, y'all thought we was gonna lose because we lost home field advantage, but we persevered. We defied the odds. We came back one game six. This one's for the fans. You guys are the best fans. And I know it's some people out there trying to hate on this three-peat, but a dynasty's a dynasty. You gotta respect that. But, ah, uh, man. I don't have any kids, though. I uh, don't. I got a huge family. I don't know if I want kids because I have a huge family. A lot of nieces and nephews have no shame in asking for shit. Anything. All, like, anything. Like, one of my nephews asked me if he could have my laptop. <laughs> but he asked me if he could have my laptop when I die. <laughs> and I'm like, what kind of request is that? Like, do you know how computers work? Do you know how death works? Like, I plan on being here a minute. You know, like, I'm a 30-year-old, fit, non-smoker, uh, uh, non-rapper. Um, <laughs> I live in an up-and-coming neighborhood. I ate a fucking kale salad today. I plan on being here a minute. You don't think that I'm gonna outlive a 2011 refurbished MacBook Pro with no space bar? The, the space bar... The space bar don't even work. But he's, he's from the hood, so like, all he knows is hood. And he was like, uncle, but what if you get shot? And I'm like, why are you so excited? <laughs> but, you, but you're right, I could get shot, I could. But I am exiting that 15 to 34 age range where homicide is the leading cause of death amongst black males. You, sir, are entering it. So, let me get that Xbox. <laughs> He just, he just thinks I'm old, you know? And I'm starting to feel old, but not like arthritis old. Just old, you know? We're like, ginger ale tastes fucking amazing now. And I, don't, and I don't know when that happens, you know? I don't know how I got like so mature, you know? It's just, it's just like ginger ale, please. Yes, I'm a homeowner. Like, I don't know, I don't know when that happens. Uh, uh, man. This is great. This is fun. This is fun. Uh, moved to New York recently. I don't know what you guys like to do on your free time, but I like to judge people. Um, that's what I'm into. I'm right at home. I know. I judge, people, I judge people based on their cell phone situation. Like, whenever somebody sends me a screenshot, I never focus on the picture. I only focus on that status bar at the top, you know? Like, my boy sent me a screenshot of a text convo he was having with his girl trying to get relationship advice, and he calls me up. He's like, okay, so you see what she wrote, so what do you think? And I was like, I think that your battery is at 2% right now. You all focused on love, you need to charge your phone. I see that your signal strength is weak, and I see that you have an alarm clock set on your phone. Like, why do you have an alarm? You don't have a job. What the fuck are you waking up for? 
And I see that you took this screenshot 25 minutes ago, which means that you sent this to five other people before you sent it to me. And that's fucked up, because I thought we had a much better friendship than that. You seek my advice first, or not at all. I don't like you or the situation. I hate you, and I hope your girl cheats on you. And she probably is cheating on you, because I saw her two weeks ago, and her cell phone screen was cracked, which means that that bitch likes to party. She is definitely down to get the dick, and she's not eligible for an upgrade. <laughs> Stuck off. Stuck off. <laughs> All right, whatever. Ah, uh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't take social media seriously, um, like at all. Like, I like to have fun. Like, I, I like to have fun on Facebook. Like, this is, this is what I like to do on Facebook. And I recommend you guys try it as well. This is what I'll do. What I'll do is I'll post a status, right? And the status will be loving, caring, uplifting. It'll get a ton of likes, tons of likes. And then I'll go back and I'll edit the status to some racist, misogynistic shit. <laughs> but I'll keep the likes, because cause they don't take those likes away. So you would click on my page and it will be like, yeah, after I fuck these white bitches, I make them put on a Ray Rice jersey and get in the kitchen where they belong and cook me some grits, eggs, bacon, and biscuits. 784 likes. <laughs> With comments too, comments like, you inspire me. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, son. Thanks, ma. Love you too. <laughs> That's just my idea of fun. Um, I'm G Cornbread on social media. If you guys want to follow me, that'd be awesome. Aside from that, I've had a great time and I have a good night. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. John Bush is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs right now. Okay, everybody, I'm very excited to introduce this uh, last comic tonight. He is a lovely guy. He's from Iowa, corn country. Two people from Iowa here, so you better laugh, you two. Anyways, you've seen him on Law & Order SVU, which is high chic. I want to know what you did. Were you a corpse or were you a body on it? Or did you have a speaking line? Like five lines. Wow! Are you in the guild? That was my line and then a gun gun. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's very exciting. Please give it up for John Bush, everybody. All right. Uh, hi. Uh, my name is John Bush. That's two places people piss. <laughs> My wife and I just celebrated four years of marriage, which is really exciting. Yeah. And her name is Barbie, so she's Barbie Bush. That's right. And she's a hairstylist, so I got the hookup. We've been trying to exercise a lot. Recently, uh, we did yoga, or as I like to call it, try not to fart for an hour. Dudes, has any dudes here done yoga? Don't, because you will fart. My wife was like, let's do yoga. I want to do something together, like yoga together. It'd be amazing. And we did, and it was all women in the class. And she's like, let's be in the middle. I was like, no, but the side with a window and a fan. <laughs> and in yoga, you focus on muscle groups that you normally don't think about. And as a result, you forget about other muscle groups. <laughs> so just in the class, into this yoga position called downward facing dog, I went into methane emitting wildebeest, was my <laughs> position. And it was Carnival Cruise Line loud, unmistakably mine, fart. There was only one tuba in the symphony. It was just like, yeah. <laughs> and I looked around expecting to get the who cut the chi look. Thank you, two people. And uh, I, I expected to get the, the mean look from all the girls, but they didn't even like, seem to bother them. They, like, it, it's like they heard my big fart, and they all decided to get their little two toots under that one right there. It was a window of opportunity. I fart, I was like, nah, 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 nah. And the teacher was encouraged. She's like, people are just really letting go of negative energies. I was like, yeah, I started it, bitches. My wife and I just got a house for the first time, and it's really, yeah, so exciting. And I'm super sensitive about everybody's opinion about the house. My wife's sister saw the house for the first time. She goes, what a wonderful little starter home. I'm 47. I'm on a 30-year mortgage.
My next house is hospice. Speaking of which, the other night, I was, I, was, I was actually feeling my chest and I felt a lump. And I, I went to the doctor the next day and he said, well, you should have it looked at. And uh, I said, I'm, I'm here. And uh, had to get, <laughs> I had to get a mammogram. God bless you women what you go through because dudes, it's a giant vice grip for your boob. And, and, and they don't care about comfort, do they, ladies? They don't. It's, it's a giant vice grip. And you know how in life, as you get older, you find words come out of your mouth you never thought you would say. And I said to the woman running the machine, I go, you're, you're not putting my tit in there. <laughs> and 2.7 uh, seconds later, my nipple was out here. I had, I had a dorsal tit. And, and then the machine lets go and it stays that way. It felt like a douchebag. Like, yeah, let's go swimming. Well, turned out to be nothing, folks. Just some, yes, just some random gelatinous mass, which is how I feel about myself anyway. And my wife can never lord over me that I've never had any typically female procedures. So I had them also run a pap smear. Okay, the other night I told that joke and a woman in the front row, blonde sitting right there goes, that's not real. <laughs> and it reminded me of a young lady that helped me one time at the mall when I was trying to get a shirt at the store and this girl helped me and this is how she talked. Anyway, sir, just to let you know, um, honestly, if you're gonna try anything on, just go to the dressing room, okay? Because I'll bring you some great shirts and it'll be really great. It was like she had to have a mouth transplant, but they ran out and had to give her a butthole. That's what it looked like. I can only give blowjobs to guys with really small penises. I've learned a couple things in my first four years of marriage. Number one, I've learned my wife doesn't want any evidence of my existence in the morning before she goes to work. She hears me breathe, she's annoyed. So that's when I try my jokey jokes out on her when she's in the bathroom, putting on her makeup, because she's the worst audience ever. If they work, holy shit, it's gotta be good stuff. So the other day I went in there, I was like, honey, what do you think of this? And she goes, you're a butthole. I was like, thank you. The other thing I learned is that my wife, she told me one day, she said, John, you are not a good listener. So I went to the hearing doctor. And after running a couple tests, he showed me a chart and he said, hey, John, here's the frequency you're missing and it's most women's voices. So I told my wife, want to get something through to me? You got to go with doo wop bass singer guys. We're like, bow da bow ba dang 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 Pick up your fucking socks off the floor. The nice knives don't go in the dishwasher. Please make foreplay much higher priority in the bedroom. So people happy with football season starting? You like that? People, you guys, are, you guys are legendary tailgaters. I know this. And uh, you guys like to tailgate. Don't tailgate for the wrong sport. I did that with my four buddies, and we got really drunk. And, you know, football, that's a good one, right? Baseball, sure. Don't do it for a track meet. <laughs> my friends and I went to a world-class track meet, completely hammered, and we got in the dumbest uh, argument I've ever been in in my life. Up in the scoreboard uh, at this place, it had the name of the athlete and their affiliation. But if they weren't affiliated, it just said unattached. But the D, the last D of that word didn't make it. And my friend goes, dude, this guy's from Unitashe. Where's Unitashe? I'm like, shut up, it's near Kenya. They make amazing baskets, shut up. I think if I could be anything, I'd be a figure skater. Because they're the coolest, aren't they? Because they get to end their routine with this thing. I love that move, man. There's always a little look to the people in the crowd that hate that skater, the little screw, I got a metal bitch now look. You gotta watch for it. It's always like... I do that after simple chores. I'll finish a chore at my house and I'll be like, <sighs> dishes. <sighs> my hero is Aaron Ralston. Aaron Ralston was that guy who was hiking out west a few years ago in the canyon and the giant boulder rolled, out, rolled onto his arm, wouldn't come off. He had to cut his arm off to live. Remember that guy? But someday his 15 minutes of fame are up. And that means there's a chance he's at a cocktail party and somebody's bragging about their camping trip and they don't know his story. Anyway, so it rained for three days. We thought we were going to die. I'll tell you that right now. Aaron, do you have a story? He's like, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's a little different than your story, but one time I was hiking out west, I was in this canyon, and this big boulder rolled on a arm, and, and it wouldn't come off, and I was like, shit, 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 shit. <laughs> because it was a canyon. And as then the days were on, I realized I, I, I got to do something. I remember in the sixth day, I just said, I'm not ready to say goodbye to life, and I remembered my rusty, trusty pocket knife. And I got that out, and I opened it up, and um, slowly began to saw through my arm. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Finally, the last vestige of skin broke free. In a daze, I stumbled through the rest of the canyon, and then I repelled on a big cliff with one arm. Never did that before. And walked 20.2 miles to safety and, uh, and lived. Woo! But I gotta tell you, I'm really glad it didn't rain like you guys had, because that would have sucked. Thank you very much.
much. You guys are great. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Michelle Collins is taking the stage when we return. Okay, guys, first of all, the show has been amazingly funny and hilarious. Uh, so good. I'm, I'm having the best time. I want to tell you a quick funny thing. I actually, I just moved back to New York. I lived in New York for many years, but then I made the mistake of moving to LA. And then I left LA when I realized the only job openings were for Uber drivers. And I was like, that's not going to work. So I like came back to New York but in like my Mercury being like, beep, beep, I'm back. Anyways, <laughs> like, if anyone needs a ride, four bucks, pretty cheap. Um, but uh, I remember when I lived in New York many years ago, why I really missed it were the artists. You know, there were great artists here. And one time um, I was bitten by a rabid dog. We'll save that story for another night. Bring the wine. Uh, I was bitten by a rabid dog, and I went to the hospital, and I heard the craziest thing that I've ever heard, ever said, and I want to share it with you. Uh, I walk into, this is St. Vincent's, no longer a hospital, but it's fine. It was, like, too haunted. They were like, we got to shut it down. It's too haunted. Uh, but anyways, I went to St. Vincent's, and there was a woman named Sheila there, and Sheila was out of her mind, and the doctors were like, Sheila, like, come on. She, like, didn't want to lay down, and they were like, Sheila, lay down on the gurney, Sheila. And she looked at them, and she said the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. She said, um... I'm gonna rent space in your head all night, bitch. <laughs> to the doctors. And I was like, that's why I wanna come back to New York. <laughs> because even the crackheads are poets here, okay, people? This is a wonderful town, and we are very blessed to live here and be here tonight. And on that note, I would like to bring up 